Hello, the objective of today's video is to learn about arithmetic sequences and how they are related to both explicit and recursive function rules. The vocabulary uh, in this particular section is all about arithmetic sequences, which is a set of numbers for which the difference between consecutive terms is always the same. Common difference is that constant difference in arithmetic sequences, and it's often given the variable d. Arithmetic sequences are commonly expressed in the form of a table, an equation, or a simple list of numbers. Table might be something like this. The list of numbers would look something like this, 3, 10, 17, 24, something like that. Equations, now the generic form for the equation of an explicit, no, the yeah, explicit one is f of n is equal to f of 1 plus d, the common difference, times n, the number of the term, minus 1. The recursive form, for the recursive form you have to have the given function value at 1, and then the generic term is going to be f of n minus 1, the previous term, plus the common difference, d, and this is for all terms greater than or equal to term number 2. Now the reason why the list of numbers is so simple is because sequences are always assuming that x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just counting up. So it's just a straightforward counting for the terms. For example, here we have a table with weeks 1, 2, 3, 4, and the new subscribers to my pathetic little YouTube channel here. And we're saying week 1 I had 45, in week 2 I had 60, in week 3 I had 75, in week 4 I had 90. The recursive rule for that particular function, for that particular arithmetic sequence, would require us to have the f of 1, and the f at 1, the function value at 1, would be 45. So that's our given. The function value of 1 is 45. To find the recursive rule for that, you would say f of n is going to be equal to f of n minus 1. That one's not going to change because it's a generic part of that. That needs to be part of that. It's just like the x stays there and the y equals mx plus b, and the y stays there in that linear equation there. This f of n minus 1 is a required part of it. The extra part is this plus d. We need to know what that d value is. The d is the common difference. And since the x values here are all going up by 1, the, the common difference really is our slope, the change in the y value over that change in the x, only since the change in x is always going to be 1, it's just the common difference in the n values, the common difference in the function values here, the y. 60 minus 45 is going to give me a difference of 15. 70 minus 60, difference of 15. 90 minus 75, the difference of 15. My d, my common difference is 15. So my function for any term n with a given f of 1 of 45 would be f of n minus 1 plus 15 for this particular arithmetic sequence. Now, recursive rules are great when you have the previous term and you can step your way up. But the explicit rule is better because it lets you find the value at any given n without having to go back to the previous value. So the explicit rule for f of n would be f of n, the function of this arithmetic sequence, the value of the function at 1, which would be 45. So this time, this f of 1 does get replaced with a number. The first term of your arithmetic sequence goes here. Plus the common difference, which we figure to be 15, now the n minus 1 is going to stay there. That's part of the function, just like the x and the y stay there when you do the 
slope intercept form of equation, this n minus 1 is going to stay there. And this is your function rule for an arithmetic sequence. The explicit rule, the recursive rule will be this combined with this here. Here's a you do. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, try and write the recursive and explicit rules for this particular arithmetic sequence, and return when you're finished. Pause. All right. Welcome back. Here we go. We're now going to see what this recursive function is going to have an f of 1 is equal to 9. f of n, the rest is going to be f of n is going to be equal to f of n minus 1, remember that stays there, plus the common difference, which in this case, going from 9 to 11 is a change of positive 2. From 11 to 13 is a change of positive 2. So my common difference is a 2. My explicit rule would be f of n is equal to, now this time I replace the f of 1 with that number 9, my common difference is still that 2, it's still the same table here, and the n minus 1 stays there. This is my explicit rule for this function, arithmetic sequence. This is my recursive rule for this arithmetic sequence. Now, I also said it could be shown as just a list of numbers. Since the x values are always going to be counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, starting with term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, arithmetic sequences are always counting from that 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, I don't have to actually show you the x values. If I give you a list like this, it's assumed that this is term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, term number 4. So the recursive rule for this one would be f of 1 is equal to 18 f of n is going to be equal to f of n minus 1, again that's always part of the recursive rule there, plus the common difference. Now this time going from 18 to 16, if I do 16 minus 18, I get a negative 2. Second minus the first, I'm getting a negative 2, it's going down by 2. Now, the common difference is what you're adding each time, but sometimes what you're adding is a negative. So, this would be adding a negative 2. Do I write it like this? No, generally, when you have plus or minus like that, you would make this minus 2 instead. Because adding the negative is the same as subtracting the positive. Now the explicit rule is going to be f of n is going to be equal to f of 1, 18, plus the common difference of negative 2 times n minus 1. Again, I wouldn't really write plus the minus here, so I would write this as 18 minus 2 n minus 1. And that would be how I'd write the function rule there. Now, if I was asked to find the hundredth term of this particular arithmetic sequence, f of 100 would be 18 minus 2 times 100 minus 1, which would be 99, parentheses first, Then I'd have to do the multiplying here before the subtraction. I would get 2 times 99 is 198. And 18 minus 198 would give me 100, negative 180. So f of 100 would actually turn out to be negative 180 in this case. So you may, not, may not only be asked to write the recursive and explicit rules, you may be asked to find the, the value of the arithmetic sequence at a certain term number. 
Uh, here is another you do. This time I would like you to write the explicit and recursive rules for these two arithmetic sequences. Pause the video, give it a try. Welcome back. The recursive f of 1 is going to be 5 here. f of n is going to be f of n minus 1. Remember that gets carried along like luggage there. Plus the common difference from 5 to 10, that's a change of 5. So that's my recursive. The explicit would be f of n is equal to the first term, 5, plus the common difference of 5 times n minus 1. Over here, this one, the f of 1 would be 45. F of n for the, again, this is the recursive version. Recursive rules, you have f of n is equal to the f of n minus 1 plus the common difference. In this case, going from 45 to 46 is a change of 1. So my common difference is 1. The explicit rule would have f of n is equal to the first term, 45, plus the common difference, 1, times n minus 1. Do I have to write the 1 there? No. So I could actually write this as f of n is equal to 45 plus n minus 1. Why not simplify it further since the parentheses are gone? 45 minus 1 is going to give me f of n is equal to 44 plus n. So, this is uh, how arithmetic sequences are related to function rules, both the recursive and explicit. I'll see you in class.